Hello, welcome to Aurelia Ranch. My name is Gunnar Tatram. We're here on the Gaviota Coast, Santa Barbara County, California. It's a 300 acre ranch. Uh, been in my family since the mid 1860s. We currently do pasture raised pork, beef, and chicken. And we have a small budding agroforestry pilot project happening where we're trying to figure out the best species that work in our uh, Southern California Mediterranean climate. It's pretty simple actually. It's just trees in pasture plain and simple, and usually both those systems being a functional system, meaning the pasture is being utilized oftentimes by herbivores, and that tree is being utilized in some manner. So yeah, de defining these systems gets a bit muddled because we're just doing what makes sense to us. We have pollinator hedgerows, wind blocks, we have tree blocks that are actually being grown for timber production. And then we have what we call tree hay, which might be called uh, silvopasture because it's animals within our tree systems in pasture. So the pigs you might see on our farm right now are Cooney Cooney, they came out of New Zealand. They have a very short nose and they're able to browse under our trees without disturbing the soil surface. When you do animal agriculture, looking for feed sources that aren't being imported makes sense for the pocketbook, and it makes sense for the animals getting a diversified nutritional diet. So we're always looking for stacking functions in that way, planting something, having it tick multiple boxes. Right now, summertime, Southern California, no rain. We won't have rain until October at our earliest. And when you don't have irrigated agriculture, ir irrigated crop, you gotta grow it in a tree form. So that's what we're doing. So it's benefiting us in that. We're growing this, which is highly nutritiously dense, as much as alfalfa, believe it or not, and takes almost no water in alfalfa, remember, is the largest user of water in California. But it also benefits the animals in other ways. It gives them shade, it gives our wildlife, wildlife corridors, it cools the soil surface. I'm a passionate woodworker and I love woods that will grow here, timber that will grow here. But I've created a business out of salvaging trees that are being cut down in the urban environment and then building furniture, pieces, artwork, stuff like that out of it. If we're reliant on outside sources to fulfill our basic needs, that's the opposite of, of resiliency. So if we're able to grow food that feeds our animals, we're able to grow trees that provide our timber for our farm operation, that's a form of resiliency. In terms of climate change, we know that building soil is helping to sequester atmospheric CO2. As we build soils, we build water holding capacity. So we get very little rain here in a very short amount of time. That rain can either run off and go out to the ocean or it can infiltrate into our soils like a sponge, hydrating our creeks and our aquifers and all that. And how do we do that? Cranializing our systems is a big factor in that. In this environment, water is a big factor. Um, so that's why we're really focusing on species, tree species that are drought tolerant. So our directive is kind of to find species that after three summers of supplemental water can be weaned off supplemental irrigation. This is one of them behind me. The carob tree is another one, the loquat. Black locust, there's quite a, there's quite a few that, that we really admire, the olive. I think the biggest challenge is, is just upfront costs. Costs that are difficult to justify unless you have this seventh generation mindset.
you have a vote and everyone's vote is vote with your dollar and just getting educated. We found out that various mulberry species have the nutrient density equal to or greater than alfalfa. Sharing that education is a way to help support this.